before. I haven't even seen much film, and some of you can correct me, but that's about the Spanish-American War. Uh, I suppose it's hard. No, maybe it's not hard for Hollywood. Hollywood can do anything. Uh, can um, uh, and uh, but it's not easy to make the Spanish-American War a noble enterprise. Uh, and so it, it, I don't think it's gotten a lot of attention in film. In the textbooks and the history classes, the, the Spanish-American War, yes, is, you know, uh, it's called a splendid little war. Last three months, short, uh, victory over the Spaniards. Uh, we did it to free the Cubans because we're always going to war to free somebody. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so we, uh, we expel the Spaniards from Cuba, uh, but we don't expel ourselves from Cuba. <laughs> And the United States takes over, in effect, takes over Cuba from that point on. Uh, I mean, one of the things that we have against Castro <laughs> is that he broke into that long interrupted control of Cuba by the United States. And uh, uh, I mean, that's a complicated thing of what's happened in the Cuban Revolution, it's true. But uh, I think it's fair to say that's uh, one grievance that the United States has against him. I can't believe that the grievance I have against him is simply because he's a dictator, because we've never held grudges against <laughs> dictators, you see. Uh, but the, uh, uh, the Spanish-American War gets a certain amount of attention because there's a heroism of Theodore Roosevelt and the Rough Riders and all of that. And, uh, and I remember learning about that in, in school, but they never said anything about the war in the Philippines. There was something about how, yeah, as a result of the Spanish-American War, we took over the Philippines. Uh, but I never knew the details on that. Uh, it's, uh, and, uh, but when you look into it, the Spanish-American War lasted three months. The Philippine War lasted for years and years. And it was a brutal, bloody suppression of the Filipino movement for independence a war that in many ways was a precursor of the Vietnam War and the atrocities committed by the American army in the Philippine Islands. Now that's a story, that story of the war in the Philippines that has never been told. It would not accrue to military heroism to, or to the glory of the United States to tell that story. To tell the story, and there, there were American, there were black American soldiers in the Philippines who soon began to identify more with the Filipinos than with their fellow white Americans. And who were very conscious of the fact that while they were fighting uh, to suppress the Filipinos, these black soldiers were hearing from back home that lynchings and ma race, race riots were taking place back home in their hometowns, and black people were being killed in large numbers. And here they were, fighting against colored people, against non-white people uh, for the United States uh, government. And a number of black soldiers moved over and deserted and went over to fight with the Filipinos. And there was one uh, incident uh, at, towards the, when the Philippine War was supposed to be over, but really the American army was still suppressing pockets of rebellion here and there. And in 1906, you know, this is six, seven years after uh, the army has moved into the Philippines. In 1906, there is a massacre. Uh, it, uh, that's the only way to describe it. Uh, of the Moros, the, uh, uh, the Muslim inhabitants of a southern island in the Philippines, uh, a village of 600 men, women, and children who have no arms. And the American army swoops down on them and annihilates every last one of them. Uh, Mark Twain uh, wrote angrily about this, wrote angrily especially about the fact that uh, the President Theodore Roosevelt uh, sent a letter of congratulations to the military commander who did this, saying this was a great military victory. This happens again and again, uh, that when the military do heinous things, uh, they're congratulated uh, for great military victories. And I remember you know, have I ever seen a movie in which Theodore Roosevelt was presented as a racist, as an imperialist, as a supporter of massacres? Uh, and there he is up on Mount Rushmore. It would take a lot to change that. I, and I've had the idea. Well, 
you know, uh, a hammer, a chisel. No, it, it wouldn't do. Uh, but uh, the uh, uh, yes, war. Uh,